Beachgoers behold your new favorite beach in Maine. As the tide goes out almost a quarter of a mile and then when it comes back in that heated up sand makes the water a little bit more warmer which is nice. Bath water this isn't but we'll take it anyway. We're in the nearby town of Phippsburg at Popham Beach State Park. Sean Valancourt is with Maine's Bureau of Parks and Lands. It's one of the sandiest, best beaches in this area, and it's probably one of the larger beaches that we have in the mid-coast. So this is Fort Popham State Historic Site. And this is this 600 acre state park also includes several forts. They're here to be a reminder for what our country's been through and the steps that we had to take to protect our ports. There's days where we get over 2,000 people that come through this peninsula and visit the park. Over the summertime we get close to 200,000 people in three months. In the 19th century, basically the entire waterfront of the Kennebec River in Bath was fully lined with a bustling shipyard. One of the region's central attractions is the Maine Maritime Museum, world renowned for its 20,000 artifacts and 20 acre campus. Out back, a curious 450 foot long sculpture. Curator of exhibits, Chris Tim. We're at the historic Percy and Small shipyard, which is the only remaining intact wooden shipbuilding site in America. So that's a uh, evocation of the schooner Wyoming, which was the largest wooden schooner ever built. It was bringing coal up from Virginia and West Virginia to Boston and Portland to fuel industrial sites there. The Wyoming launched in 1909. From the 1600s to the 1920s, more than 2,300 ships were built in Bath. Life aboard these ships was not easy and sometimes disastrous. If you look at historical records all the way to the present day, um, it's estimated that about 1,300 vessels have been lost off the coast of Maine. So that's a staggering uh, number. A new exhibit does a deep dive into shipwrecks. Shipwrecks and Salvage, this exhibit, basically looks at how kind of shipwrecks have been dramatized and imagined how the technologies were developed to basically go down below and visit and recover objects from these vessels. Um, but then also just how can they be preserved and better understood and studied. Wrecks immortalized in art include the Hanover. In 1849, the Brigantine headed home to Bath after a long journey from Europe. Unfortunately, family was out on the beach ready to welcome it back. An unfavorable wind and unfavorable current made it catch a bar and wash up near Popham Beach. Nearly 40 crew members perished. Here you'll be learning a little bit about the history of diving technology. And the, the museum also here. highlights salvage diving, including the laws and ethics behind this perilous and unpredictable job. While looking at this old diving suit on display, we met museum goer Troy Gruber. The most significant danger is death. Decompression sickness, also known as the bends or air embolism. Get a bubble in your bloodstream and it gets to your brain, it can kill you. A Florida resident on vacation in Bath, Gruber was a U.S. Navy diver for 21 years and wore a suit just like this one. The suit itself is rubberized canvas. The helmet is spun copper and brass, and the whole suit weighed 198 pounds. The shoes weighed 85 pounds. Just getting up was a challenge. You stand up, you walk, and walk down a ladder into the water. You learn to swing your legs. That was the only way to make it up. What Gruber had to do is tough to imagine. With salvage aircraft that fell out of the sky, salvaged a couple of Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard cutters. The biggest was the recovery of parts from Space Shuttle Challenger. Gruber also documented crash sites on film for investigators. My last salvage operation before I retired was to pick up two um, pilots off a U.S. Navy aircraft that crashed in the Gulf of Mexico in over 4,000 feet of water just to bring them back to their families. Now, there are generally two laws governing salvage from a vessel. The law of salvage means a diver or company works with the owner of the sunken or destroyed vessel to recover the property. The law of fines is essentially 
finders keepers, and that can motivate treasure hunters. Sometimes there's a disagreement over whether a vessel is deemed abandoned or not, and that can be the subject of long legal disputes. And in the state of Maine, historic shipwreck sites belong to the state. So if you ever come across one while diving, don't take a souvenir with you. All right, coming up at 14, her dream came true.